Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have z to the fourth power minus 5z squared plus 1 divided by 1 minus z squared equals 4iz and we're going to be solving for z values. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. When you get a rational equation, the first thing you should try is to try to factor the numerator and the denominator. The denominator is factorable, isn't it? It's difference of two squares. But what about the numerator? Do you think that's factorable? It could be. Maybe we can turn this into a difference of two squares, but looks like it's not going to turn into one. Maybe we can use the by quadratic, replace z squared with w, and then try to factor the quadratic, and then kind of back substitute whatever. But again, that's not going to help us, as far as I can see. So let's go ahead and do the following instead. Cross multiply. z to the fourth minus 5z squared plus 1 equals 4iz is going to be multiplied by 1 minus z squared. So it's going to be 1 4iz minus 4iz cubed. Awesome. Let's go ahead and put this into a full quartic equation in z. z to the fourth plus 4iz to the third. Now we have minus 5z squared minus 4iz plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Does this look familiar in any way to you? Look at the coefficients. 1, 4i, negative 5, negative 4i, and 1. So there seems to be some type of symmetry, except for the fact that we have a 4i and a negative 4i, but that could be taken care of. And then we have the negative 5z squared in the middle, which is obviously reflexive, right? And z to the fourth is a coefficient of 1, which agrees with the constant term. So this looks like a good candidate for a perfect quadratic. Well, actually not quadratic. Cortic, I mean, right? So here's what I'm talking about. I can turn this into something using the binomial theorem. So here's what I'm going to do z to the fourth plus 4i z cubed and then I'm going to do the following I'm going to write this as the negative 5 z squared as negative z squared negative 6 z squared plus z squared makes sense and then the minus 4i z and then plus 1 equals 0 and now we're going to do the following we're going to turn this into z to the fourth plus 4iz cubed. Now I'm going to replace the negative 1 in negative 6 with i squared. So it's going to be plus 6i squared z squared. And I'm going to save this for last. And I'm going to turn the negative i into an i cubed. So it can be written as 4i cubed z. You, you know i cubed is negative i. And then now we have the 1 which can be written as i to the fourth power, right? But why did we do that? You'll see in a little bit. And I have the z squared at the very end, and this is equal to zero. Now, I want you to focus on the expression inside the parentheses. Here we go. What does that look like? Look at the coefficients one more time. One, four, six, four, one. Does that remind you Pascal's triangle? Sixth row, right? I mean the fourth row not the sixth one. So we're talking about binomial coefficients here, right? So we can basically write this as z plus i to the fourth power. Make sense? Plus z squared equals zero. This is not the end of it. This is just the beginning of the story. But here's the hardest part to overcome, okay? So in other words, I'm talking about this. If you have a plus b to the fourth power, a to the fourth plus 4a cubed b plus 4a squared b squared plus, okay, not 4, it's 6, 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the fourth. Notice that this is, this comes from the binomial theorem. The coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, except we replace b with i, so we can get i here, i squared here, and i cubed here. Make sense? i cubed i squared and i along with everything else so this is how it works 
and now we have a nice expression. Now, how could you simplify this though? This is kind of like a sum of two squares. Obviously, you can factor sum of square, squares, but in a previous problem, if you remember, we've done something similar. And what we did was basically put the z squared on the right hand side as negative z squared. And don't worry about it because we can still square negative numbers. Come on, we're on the complex world, right? So we can write the negative z squared as i z squared because that's what it is. And then we can kind of put these two together as difference of two squares and then factor it accordingly like this. This is z plus i squared squared minus i z squared. And then it can be factored as z plus i squared plus i z and z plus i squared minus i z. And guess what? These are quadratic factors, which are very easy to solve. Now, if you go to set this equal to zero, now we can factor each one or set each one equal to zero. For example, the first one, z plus i squared can be written as negative i z, or you can just expand it. Same idea, right? Doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and expand this. This is gonna give us z squared plus two i z plus i squared plus i z equals zero. I squared is negative one, two iz and iz are like terms. So we can go ahead and add them up and minus one equals zero. Awesome. This is gonna give us some solutions, right? This is quadratic, let's go ahead and solve it and then we're gonna go back to the other factor. So z is gonna be from here negative b, which is negative three i, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative nine, minus four ac, which is plus four. And that gives us negative five, the square root of negative five is square root of 5i. So we can kind of factor out an i and write this as negative 3 plus minus the square root of 5 all multiplied by i divided by 2. Notice that this is not like a plus pi but more like something times i. Make sense? Uh, make sure not to get confused with this one because this one is definitely different. Okay? That's not the answer. This is the answer. That's one of the solutions though. Let's go back and see if we can solve the other equation, z plus i squared minus i z equals zero. This is z squared plus i z. Remember, this is two i z minus i z minus one equals zero. To keep a long story short, z is gonna be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative one. Again, plus four. This time, we get a real number divided by two. And that's actually gonna be square root of three, but we can kind of write it as plus minus square root of three minus i divided by two. So the plus minus must be in front of square root of three. Yes, I know I write the plus minus differently. Okay, let me say that before you comment on it, but feel free to comment on it anyways. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.